Hello. In a previous video I showed how I made these coasters out of scrap wood and epoxy resin. In this video I show how I carried on that theme to make these holders for the coasters and introduce a method for making the mixed wood and resin dowels without access to a lathe. I'm going to start by using this 15mm hardwood dowel and in order to make a mould for the resin I'm going to use these. These items are plastic sleeves designed to put over radiator pipes as an alternative to painting. The plastic sleeves have a shiny surface which will stop the resin from adhering to it. The sleeve can be widened by pulling it apart in order to insert the dowel. It then springs back tightly against the dowel. The design I have in mind features splintered dowels encased in resin. To achieve this effect I simply held the dowel in the vise, advanced it a little bit and belted it with a hammer to snap pieces off. Each time I caused a fracture I advanced the remaining dowel in the vise. I could then use a saw to make a clean cut behind the fracture at the end of the dowel. Thus I got two broken pieces for each strike. It was quite a fun process, although it did feel a little strange as most of the time in my workshop I'm trying to avoid breaking things. As tempting as it was, the best way to do this was with a fairly gentle amount of pressure on the mallet. And after a couple of minutes I ended up with these pieces. The next job was to make a simple jig to hold the pieces while the resin set. I cut a couple of strips of MDF and then marked up the position for the holes I was going to cut to hold the pieces. I cut some holes large enough to hold the pieces using a forstner bit. Then, using a couple of pieces of scrap wood, I glued together something that looks a bit like a test tube rack from a science lab. I clamped it up and left it to dry. Next I decided to cut down the plastic sleeves as they were longer than I required. I simply marked the halfway point in each sleeve and then used a pair of strong scissors to cut them. Of course if you have access to a lathe you could make the uprights as square sections and then turn them down to dowels. However, this method works just great for anyone that doesn't have access to a lathe. Before continuing I decided to cut down some of my dowel pieces in order to give a variety of lengths. When I'm happy with the lengths I start inserting them into the sleeves. With the sleeve in position I tape up any gaps to stop the resin leaking out. First I put some tape around the bottom edge. This helps to seal the bottom of the sleeve. It also helps to pull the sleeve nice and tight. I then put some further tape across the bottom just to improve the seal. And finally a long strip of tape along the seam of the sleeve. I repeat this process for all of the sleeves. And once done I'll put them all in the holder ready for the resin. I'm using the exact same resin I used for the coasters.
and I'm using the same pigment too. I thoroughly mix the resin, the hardener and the pigment. And now it's time to add it to the moulds. Rather than pouring the resin in, I decided to dribble it off the end of a stick. This method helps to avoid air bubbles, although it is a laborious process, not to mention being quite messy. I keep going until the resin is more or less to the top of the mould. I then repeat this process across all of the other pieces. Once the moulds are full of resin, I leave them to dry for about 48 hours. When the resin is dry, I remove the pieces from the moulds. The tape comes off easily enough and any resin spilt on the outside of the mould peels straight off. Once the tape has been stripped off, the sleeve easily opens and the piece removed. The mould stand can be reused next time, as can the sleeves. Any residual resin peels straight off and leaves them clean ready for the next time. Next is time to think about the base. I'm going to make the bases for the holders out of this piece of sapelli. I place one of the coasters on the wood to get an idea of the position. That looks about right. I mark in the point where the coaster crosses the top edge of the base. I then mark this top and bottom and use that as a reference for the diagonals, which I mark up using my combination square set at 45 degrees. I put the coaster back into position and line up with these marks. I then draw in the opposite side of the coaster. I then reference the distance between the diagonal and the edge of the board and mark in from the diagonal on the other side to where the edge of the board should be. I mark this in and then score with a knife. I prepare for the cross cut by chiselling against the knife mark to create a guide for the saw cut. I then use a tenon saw to cut this piece off. I mark in where the centre of the uprights are going to be by measuring halfway between each corner and the diagonal. Once marked up, I use a forstner bit in my drill to cut the holes to receive the dowels. I've stuck two base pieces together using double sided tape so I can drill the holes at the same time and make them uniform. With three holes drilled I'll do a test fit. I push the dowel pieces gently into the holes and then use a stack of coasters to test the position. 
That all looks fine, so I can drill the final hole. And after another test fit, everything looks fine. The wood on the base is twice as wide as I need it, so I'm going to cut each of the base pieces into two, so I'm going to end up with four base pieces. I'll tidy up each of the bases using a smoothing plane to remove any tool marks. Using a block plane, I chamfer the top edges of all the base pieces. I ensure that I first plane the edges that run parallel to the grain. The chamfered edge on the parallel side will help to stop tear out on the end grain side when I come to plane that. I make several passes on the corner, rotating the plane as I go. And that's the base is prepared. Some of the dowel pieces have a slight lip in the resin. This is where the seam of the sleeve met. It's a simple process just to take this off by gently passing over it with a file. I can then polish out any tool marks using a high grit glass paper. I do another test fit to see how things look. At this stage the dowel pieces are still of different lengths. I've added four coasters to the holder so that I can decide the ideal height for the dowel pieces. I'll add an extra two or three millimetres to the length to allow for the final trimming that I'll do once everything's fitted. First however I'm going to cut off any excess wood from the bottom of each piece to ensure that the resin join is featured. I use the bandsaw to trim off the excess because it has a narrow kerf and will therefore help me avoid any tear out that I might get using a tenon saw. With the pieces all trimmed I'm now ready to cut them all to a uniform length. To do this I'm making another simple jig to hold the piece while I cut it on the bandsaw. The jig is just cobbled together out of bits of scrap MDF and popsicle sticks. I secure my jig to the biter gauge on the bandsaw and use it to cut all the pieces to equal length. And there they are. To make it easier to get the dowels into the holes, I round off the leading edge with a file. It's this leading edge which is going to be trimmed off once the piece is assembled, and this is why I need the extra two or three millimetres in the length. Using popsicle sticks across the middle and each corner of the base, I raise the base about two or three millimetres off of the bench top. I then add wood glue to the inside edge of the hole. I tap the dowel through the hole ensuring that it goes all the way through until the bottom of the dowel hits the bench top. This means that the dowel is now protruding about 2mm proud of the bottom of the base. And the height of the top of each dowel will be uniform. I check the dowels are square before wiping off any excess glue and leaving it to dry.
Once dry, I want to sand and polish the tops of the dowels. I could have polished the tops of the dowels individually, but that would have risked the uniformity of the height. To do this job, I have attached some sandpaper and then two grades of glass paper to a granite tile. I start with the sandpaper to get off any tool marks and then move on to the wet and dry. I spray some window cleaner onto the wet and dry to help the polishing. It doesn't take a great deal of effort. I'll polish away on the first grade of wet and dry until things are looking pretty smooth. When I'm happy with that, I'll add some window cleaner to the high grade of wet and dry paper and do the final polishing. It makes a bit of an unpleasant noise because of the length of the dowels, but it doesn't take too long before everything is nicely polished. After a final wipe with the cloth, I'm quite happy with the results. The final task is to remove the excess rounded over leading edge of the dowel, which is protruding beyond the base. I start by putting the base upside down in my vise. I then slice off the protruding dowel using a chisel, making skewing motions across its surface and taking it down a little bit at a time. This only works with a really sharp chisel. In fact you shouldn't really do anything with a blunt chisel as a blunt chisel is unpredictable. Once everything is down as flat as it can be, I give it a final go over with the smoothing plane. And there we have everything perfectly flush. I'm going to finish the base using Danish oil. I rub a decent amount on using a paper cloth and allow it to soak into the grain. I leave everything for several hours to allow the oil to cure and then use some fine grain sandpaper to remove any rough spots. I then apply another coat of Danish oil. In total I apply four coats, sanding between each. And here are the finished holders. And this is what they look like with their coasters. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please press like. Check out our channel for other projects and subscribe to keep up to date.